Physics Review, Geometric Optics. Here are some multiple choice questions. Question number one, I've drawn in my extra of the answer. It's a diverging mirror. And the reason I know that is that when the parallel rays of light come in, they spread apart after they bounce. So first of all, it's a mirror because the, the rays are reflecting and not refracting. So it has to be a mirror. And then they're spreading apart, so it's a diverging or convex mirror. All these little hash marks back here are not hairs. That's like the shaded region behind the mirror. Number two, the, um, it's, a convex, well, it's the same thing, convex mirror. And you start over here on the left. This is kind of a tough problem. A couple steps here. Magnification equation here is m equals negative d sub i over d sub o. It tells you the magnification here is 0.57. It's positive. It's upright. It's a virtual image here. So then you plug in uh, the 10.4 for the object distance, and you get the image distance is negative 5.93. Once again, if you didn't have the diagram, the negative implies a virtual image, upright. Once you have the image distance, you go to the lens equation, 1 over f equals 1 over d sub o plus 1 over d sub i, and you plug in 10.4 for object distance, negative 5.93 for image distance, and you do all the math there. I skipped all the steps for that. You don't need to show all that work. If you did, that's fine, or if you do, that's fine, but f comes out to be negative 13.8 centimeters. It's a negative focal length for a diverging mirror. It's a positive focal length for converging, like number 5 to the right here. You'll see that in a few minutes. Radius of curvature is 2 times the focal length, so you double that, you get 27.6 centimeters. If they just ask for the magnitude, this is the magnitude, so the magnitude is just 27.6. So if it just says magnitude, you could just say 27.6 centimeters. You don't need to say negative. That's number two. Number three. Once again, it's a double step problem. It tells you the radius of curvature is 29.4, so I use the radius of curvature equation to get the focal length. Focal length being 14.7. It's positive. It's a converging mirror. So you have 1 over 14.7 over here is my second step using the lens equation. Equals 1 over 8.6, my object distance. And once again, you can do these all in centimeters. If you stay in centimeters, the answers come out in centimeters. So here you'd be doing 1 over 14.7, and you're going to subtract the 1 over 8.6. If you want to, put them all in decimal form. And then at the very end, you have to take the reciprocal to get the image distance. Make sure you practice these as far as the algebra goes, because I, I know a lot of mistakes are made trying to do the algebra here. But those are, that's the setup. Just do the algebra. d sub i equals negative 20.7. Once again, a virtual image. With a converging mirror, you get a virtual image if your object is inside the focal length. Anywhere in here where the object is inside the focal length, you get a large virtual image. And it's upright, as always. A virtual image is always upright. And it kind of shows you the ray diagram. It shows you the outline for the ray diagram. And uh, so the magnitude of that image distance is 20.7. Okay, number four, then the magnitude, oh, the uh, magnification for that problem, negative d sub i. So it's going to be negative, negative 20.7. So you have to include the negative 20.7 as your image distance. Divided by your object distance of 8.6, so you get a positive magnification. If you get a negative magnification, it's not right. Positive magnification is 2.4 times larger, taller than the object. Here's another one, a converging mirror. It shows you the ray diagram. Let me just go back one second here just to kind of show you in the ray diagram. This would be the ray that comes uh, through F. That would be lined up with F. That's the reflection. And here's how you find the image okay, by going backwards. And then here's the ray of light that comes in uh, parallel. That's actually step one. The top one I did was actually number three in the order of steps in the notes. And then this is the reflected ray through F. Okay, and you follow that back. That, that's step number one in the notes. 
and the other one I've shown there is not one that we use. So you don't need to use all three, just two. And the second step there is hard to use. I'm not going to go over that one right now. That's a little practice, though. Same thing for number five. If I do the ray diagram for my object, so here's a ray of light coming in parallel to the principal axis, Re reflects through F. That's our typical step number one. That's typical step number one. And then st typical step number three is through F, and then comes out parallel. That's typical step number three. They show another one, another reflection there that we're not going to deal with. You don't need to draw that V-shaped reflection there. But anyways, the math here on this one, uh, the magnification here, and here's where it gets a little tricky. It says the image is 1.52 times larger. It's a real image. So the, the, the problem here is, or the, the real sticking point possibly is that negative right there. You gotta put the, you gotta remember to put the negative 1.52. It's a flipped or inverted image. So you have to remember to put that negative 1.52 right there. E equals negative d sub i over 24.4. In which case, that gives you a positive d sub i, which is always true for a real image. You get a positive d sub i. Image distance is positive. If it comes out positive, we know it's a real image. If it comes out negative, we know it's a virtual image, even without looking at the diagram. And then we have enough to plug into our lens equation. 1 over f equals 1 over the object distance of 24.4 plus 1 over the image distance we just calculated of 37.1. You get a focal length of 14.7 centimeters. And the radius then, the magnitude, is you double that. 29.4 centimeters. Okay, next section here, number six. I'm going to come back to number six because I'm going to do number seven first. Uh, I'm going to number six first, number seven, then I'll come back to number six. But I drew it out already. I have my three. So the one on top here is number one, comes in parallel, refracts through. The focal point right there, that's the key for that one. It refracts through the focal point. Then number two is the one that goes through the center of the lens. And then number three is the one that goes through the focal point on the left side for a converging lens like this. It comes out parallel. They all intersect right there. So here's my image. Here's my image. Now on the notes, around the homework, you have to draw all your images. I'm drawing them in for you right now. That's my image. Looks a little bit larger than the object. Now it's a real image because it's actual light. That's really the definition of a real image is actual light, not virtual backward projected light using dash lines. This is real light that goes there as opposed to if you go back up here. Well, actually, if I go back to this one, well, this one right here, number three, that's a virtual image, not just because it's upright because it's actual, it's not actual light that goes back there. It just appears like light's coming from back there. It doesn't actually come back from back there. It's a virtual image. There's no actual intersecting light. It's a virtual intersection. As opposed to this one, it's actual light. That's why it's a real image. You can project it on a screen. So we've got to find our choice here. Well, the only choice so far is number five is real, but there's a few more choices at the top of the next column, eight, nine, and 10. But, but here's the thing. Real images are always inverted. So it can't be number eight, can't be number 10. It could be number nine real inverted but is it smaller and number five is real inverted so it's either five or nine but if you look at this diagram and if you compute this it's larger so it is number five here number five is the answer real is always inverted so that's the you know that's the main reason why that's the answer plus the fact it's larger okay that's number seven but now i'm gonna do number six i'm gonna erase this I'm going to erase all this. Let's see if I can do that. Okay, yeah, there we go. Erase all that. And you might need to get a separate piece of paper. But in number six, it says um, if the object is more than twice the focal length, what's true about the image? So now I'm going to put an object. I'm going to put an object out here. So you have to kind of erase that object they have already there. I'm going to draw a new diagram. So the new diagram is. Light comes in, refracts through F. Okay, that's number one. I'm going to do number three. Going in through F, refracts parallel. 
So what happens is, and I could draw my third one, the one that goes through the center. There's number three. It's a very similar diagram that, to the one I erased, but when you move that object back like I just did, what happens is the image kind of moves in a little bit. Shoot, that's my image. All right, it's smaller now. In fact, if you move your object back farther and farther and farther, if you move your object all the way back to an infinite distance, your image will be at the focal point. That's kind of the definition of focal point. It takes light from uh, a far distance away, infinite distance away, parallel, parallel light coming in, it focuses all to the focal point if you have something that's infinitely far away or very sufficiently far away. So, anyways, that's extra information. But if you look at this diagram here, the image is between the F and the 2F location. And it's real still. So number one in the answer is from number six. Larger than the object? No. Located a distance between F and 2F from the lens? Yes. That's the answer. I mean, you can we can go and, and look at all the other wrong answers. It's not virtual, so it's not number three. Four, located inside the focal point, which means closer to the lens than F? No. It's between F and 2F. And number five, located a distance more than 2F. Now it's close, but it's between the F and 2F. If you do it this way, it'll always come out between F and 2F. The only time that the image comes out at 2F is if your object is at 2F. That's the kind of the break-even symmetrical spot. All right, so that diagram there now is for number six. All right, we had seven. Number eight, compare a lens with a... Um, that's used to capture an image, like on a camera, to a lens that's used to project an image onto a screen. Well, for a camera that captures an, captures an image with a lens, it has to capture the image on a screen on the film, or on the film plane if it's a digital camera. These are always real images. They're both the same types of lenses. Okay, They both have to create a real image. And the only way, the only way you can get a real image is the converging lens, if we're using lenses. If we're using mirrors, you can have a converging mirror. but Cameras don't use mirrors, they use lenses. Telescopes can use mirrors. All right, but cameras do not use mirrors, they use lenses to capture the light and focus it. Number nine, why is the image projected onto the back of the retina in your eye upside down? It is a real image, and there's a converging lens. Okay, it's a real image. Once again, as we went through that in the notes in Unit 25, it's quite amazing that you're brain interprets that picture and then kind of flips it back right side up. It's incredible how the eye is doing that and the processing power of the, the brain and so forth. Okay, number 10. Uh, the magnification is uh, found to be 2.4. So we start again in this column right here. You can't see it too well. I'm off the page there, but well, starting with this, d sub i well, the magnification is 2.4, and it's positive. Converging lens doesn't say whether it's a real or virtual image. It must be a, it must be a virtual image. In order for the, the magnification to be positive, it's a virtual image. That means it's upright. Anyways, d sub i, well, d sub o was 21, so you do the math. You get d sub i is negative 50. So you can't see it there, so I'll have to write it down. Um, you have, so for the next step, it's going to be 1 over f equals 1 over 21 plus 1 over negative 50.4. So it's a few steps. If you do all that, for number 10, it comes out to be 36 centimeters for the focal length. It's a converging lens, but you have a virtual image because you're inside the focal length. You're inside the focal length of that lens. I'll do another example of that for a few minutes here. Number 11. All right, so I started the diagram. And the thing is, for diverging lenses like this, and for diverging mirrors as well, you always get virtual images. And they always make things smaller. They always make things smaller. This is the kind of lens that most young people have because they're myopic, myopic, they're... Um, they can't see far. They can. They're nearsighted. Uh, myopia is is corrected with these kinds of lenses, whether they're glasses or uh, contact lenses. 
they're diverging lenses to correct that. And we have that in the notes. Anyway, to, to draw the, the ray diagram, here you go. Step one, I have in red, parallel light coming in, bends such that it goes through the lens, but it's lined up with the focal point F. All right. And the blue one is the one that goes through the lens without bending. It looks like it's not straight, but it should be that one long straight line. That blue line should be straight. And now you do number three. But you have a small image always right there, always between F and the lens. So it's virtual. Okay, it's upright. So virtual upright. Actually, number one, number one is the answer right away. Okay, not, not number two because it's not inverted. Real and upright never. Real is always inverted. Virtual inverted never. Real upright no because real is always inverted. Number six, real upright no. Virtual inverted. Seven could be it, but it's not the same size. That's why seven is not the answer. Ten non-existent no. It's existent. Diverging lenses always get an image. Diverging mirrors always give an image. The only time you don't get an image is for converging lenses or mirrors where you put the object on the focal point. That's the only time you don't get an image is if you put an object on the focal point of a converging lens or mirror. 10, virtual upright. Ooh, that's true so far, but it's not the same size. That's why this number 9 is false because that last part is false. And number 10, virtual upright and enlarged. No, it's shrunk. So the last part is wrong again. All right, number 12. Here's the diagram. Diverging lens. It's a similar diagram to the one we just did. They give you the... Oh, here's, here's where you got to be careful. It says the focal length is 28.7. But look, okay, I had to put in the negative 28.7. All right. If you don't put in a negative there, you're going to get the wrong answer. You have to know from doing these and be, being told that for diverging lenses, diverging mirrors, the focal length is negative. In the, in the literature, it might not say that. It does say it's a divergent or diverging lens, though. So you have to put that negative in the equation when you solve this. It's very important. Object distance 20.1. So you have 1 over negative 28.7 equals 1 over 20. So you're going to subtract the 1 over 20 from both sides. D sub I, virtual, negative 11.8 centimeters. That's number 12. Then number 13 is find the magnification. Magnification is the opposite of the image distance, negative 11.8, divided by 20.1. So indeed, well, you get 0.59 for magnification. Always shrinks. Always diverging lines of shrink. So once again, the diagram, the diagram is light comes in, all right, bends such that. So that's the actual light going through, all right? Here's some, all, some other light that actually goes through. So that's step number one. This is step number two in our progression. I'm not going to highlight their number two. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm not going to highlight number three there because we have enough. If I take these backwards, if I go backwards right here with dashed lines, here's where they intersect right there at the tip of the image arrow. Okay, number 13. Fine. Oh, that we did that. 14 up here on the right side. This one's pretty straightforward. They just give you the object distance, image distance. Object is 32.2 centimeters. Image 9.95. That's just a straight plug in and calculate. Once again, make sure you practice those. They will come up on the exam. F equals 7.60. And then your magnification is the opposite or negative of the 9.95 image distance divided by the object distance of 32.2. That indeed is a negative 0.31. The negative is important here. It's going to be a real image. It's flipped, okay, or inverted, inverted. So the negative there gives you a lot of clues. It tells you it's a real image and it's inverted. Okay, 16. Holmes, Sherlock Holmes, using basically what we call a magnifying glass. I did have an example. This is actually the diagram is in the notes, unit 25, example number two. I have the diagram. I'm not going to do the diagram right now. But you have the focal length and your object is inside the focal length. So whenever the object is inside the focal length for these lenses, you get magnification. You get a virtual image. I can tell you that because D is negative. When D is negative, D sub I, D sub I is negative, it's a virtual image. When M is negative, that's a real image. It's a little tricky there. When the image distance is negative, that's a virtual image. When M is negative, that's a real image. You can write that down and refer to that on the exam. 
Anyways, if d sub i is negative 29, then the magnification is the negative of negative 29, which gives you a positive. That's why the magnification here comes out to be positive. That's a virtual image. That's, you know, it's, it's the positive magnification for a virtual image because d is d sub i is negative. So there you go. All right. Once again, oh, we have to then describe that. Now, we don't have the diagram here. You can look in your notes, but I already said magnification is positive. It's a virtual image. So it's either it's either number one, uh, four, six, or seven. It's not real. I shouldn't I shouldn't circle those. I, I you know it's not real. So I get rid of real, real, real. Virtual and inverted. It can, virtuals are always not always upright. Virtual inverted. No. Virtual upright. Virtual upright. It could be six or seven. Or number three. None of these. It's not that because it is. Well, let's see here. Hang on. It might be none of these. It's virtual and upright. Um, well, it's either larger or smaller. So it is. It isn't number three. All right. So is the image larger or smaller? Well, we know it's larger because m is two point eight seven. That's bigger than one. So it's larger. So based on the data or the numbers, virtual and upright always go together. Positive magnification, negative image distance also is a clue for virtual. Virtual always goes with upright, and it's larger because the magnification is greater than one. All right, so there's a review of ray optics.